everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my monthly favorites. Um, so I did skip, oh, got a little cat hair. Um, I did end up skipping May, um, because I just felt like I didn't have enough favorites for that month. I didn't want to do like a three item video because that's silly. Um, I think I may have picked the wrong top for this because it's kind of getting washed out, but, um, so I've combined May and June. So these are just my monthly favorites for May and June. Um, I have a lot, a lot of books because it's been two months and um, I guess an equal amount of um, beauty products. So to start things off, I'm just going to say my number one favorite for the entire two months was the vacation I took the week of my birthday in New Hampshire. And it was just wonderful. The weather was amazing. The food was great. I I drank every single day, not like not to excess, but I did have like a drink every single day. Um, I spent a lot of time by the pool, a lot of time in the hot tub. It was it was really fun. I enjoyed myself a lot. Um, and going kind of hand in hand with that, my next monthly favorite is I have rediscovered my love for my camera. So I have a Nikon Coolpix L8. L820? I'm sure it's on here somewhere. Um, yeah, it's the Nikon Coolpix L820 and I got it because there's a feature that allows you to um, pick a color and it'll make everything black and white in the picture except for that color. <clears throat> now I did kind of regret my decision to get this camera kind of as soon as I got it because it was a, I mean it wasn't too pricey it was probably about 200 bucks when I got it um, but it's not a DSLR and I noticed on my trip when I try to set the exposure um, to the lowest setting it freezes and I have to open the bottom to get the batteries out to turn my camera off and then wait for it to retract the, the lens but if I don't change the exposure to the lowest setting, it's a very good camera. I really, pre I really like it. Um, do I want a new camera that's a DSLR? Yes. Um, currently, I am filming all my videos on my laptop, and it does tend to overheat. And I would like to use like an actual DSLR camera, so I'm saving up right now to get that. I do not have an amazing job, so I eventually. But I just. I put this on manual. I raise the ISO up to like the highest setting and I just play around the, with the exposure and I feel like I'm getting a lot of experience just using that. So let's move on to what is on my lips today. I This is my all time favorite lip, com lip combination of the two months. It is the ColourPop uh, Bold Pop Lipstick 08, and it's this like insanely dark berry color. So I never wear it on its own because it's very creamy, and it's one of the matte ones, but it's, it's very, very creamy, and if you put a lot on, it will definitely smear all over your face if you're not careful. So I'll put like a light layer on and I take either my finger or a piece of toilet paper or a q-tip and I just kind of like rub it in and I get like a really nice beautiful like pinky berry color out of this which you wouldn't really necessarily expect because it's like so so dark in the tube. Um, and then I top it with the uh, Sarah Hap um, the Pink Slip One Luxe Gloss. Um, I got this as a Will You Be My Bridesmaids kind of gift. And it's got like a minimal amount of sparkle in there, which at first I was like, sparkly lip gloss, I don't know. But you actually can't even tell. It does not uh, come across as glittery or anything like that. It's a very, very like nice thick gloss but it's not sticky so it's definitely like my lips aren't sticking together it's got like a good slip but it's thick so it stays on for longer and your lips stay glossy and 
when you put it on it doesn't rub the color away the wand does get a little bit stained actually to tell you the truth it doesn't even look stained now that I've put it back in the tube but it's got a very funky looking dofa applicator it's like um, they're really fat on the top but I really really love it and if you don't put too much on it doesn't get gloppy and it's so comfortable to wear I so recommend this I think I think it was like an Etsy uh, brand I'm not sure but I'll link it below if I can find it um, sticking with lips I recently went to not recently <laughs> I went to Sephora with a friend of mine and I was just kind of looking around trying to find something um, I think I was looking for lip gloss or lip balm because I ended up getting a lip balm I kind of just like look around Sephora and then I see like then I think oh yeah look at all the lip balms and then I just kind of test them and I went with the um, Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm uh, SPF 25 and this is Natural Mint and Shea Butter I like this a lot it's a very like Vaseline kind of um, kind of a feel it's just a squeezy tube and I, I can't say that it's necessarily prevented my chapped lips um, I will say that it's it's a very nice lip balm for when your lips are just feeling like really really extra dry and just irritated it's good to put something thick like this on <clears throat> to just kind of like soothe them for the time being so I highly recommend I think this is like seven and change it wasn't too expensive and I have had it for a while I actually like now that I'm looking at it I'm definitely almost out which is crazy to think about but I've never used up a lip balm in my life um, okay so next is this nail lacquer from OPI that I got at TJ Maxx I was just kind of looking around trying to find like a nice color um, for my vacation and it's called do you take lay away lay like a like a Hawaiian lay and I did not end up wearing this for my vacation I got my nails done instead in this really bright orangey color also by OPI um, but this is what's currently on my toes it was on my uh, fingernails before I got this um, this color so I really like it I I didn't think I would and it comes off different in different lightings so in my bathroom it takes on the hue of like the colors of the wall which is like a really like horrible pink color <laughs> um, but everywhere else it's just like a nice off-white beigey color so it really depends on like which lighting you're in and I don't know it's just one of those colors that kind of changes with light so I really like the color it's actually still on my toes I need to redo um, my nail polish but I really really love that color um, okay so next I've got two lotions here one is just a regular body one it's the Aveeno Active Naturals daily moisturizing lotion and this one is um, oh it's got soothing oatmeal in it and I use this on my legs because I have the worst dry itchy legs imaginable and I just feel like using a fragrance free moisturizer like this it's not going to irritate if I've scratched the crap out of my legs and they're they're red and they're scratch marks because I'm vicious um, it's not going to irritate because it is fragrance free so it's not going to sting or anything like that and I just like it. it's very moisturizing it goes on really nicely and I can't say that it stops the itching it's definitely not like a like an itching kind of moisturizer it's just um, a soothing one so I like it because it doesn't irritate my skin so I use this and I use it almost every night before I go to bed and then this one is a face moisturizer recently ran out of my caudaly um, sample that I had I was going to buy a new face moisturizer and then I ended up getting this and then I ended up running out of the other one so I was like what the heck so I'm just gonna use this until I run out it's Eucerin brand and it's daily protection face solution with SPF 30 funny because I thought that said 50 for like the whole time I've had it so that's funny um, but it's SPF 30 um, 
and it moisturizes to pr and helps protect skin against UV. It's fragrance free and it's dermatological skincare. So I guess it's derm dermatologically uh, recommended. It is dermatologically recommended. It says it's fast absorbing and non greasy, and I definitely agree. I've tried face um, lotions before, and they've left like this horrible greasy feeling on my face. I will say. This is the light. It's it's got like a scale from like light to rich, and it's more towards the the light, which I like because if I clog my pores, it's like spot city. Um, this is not waterproof. I did not know that this is not waterproof until I put it on and went to the pool, and you have to um, sh like take a little shower before you get in the pool. I hate places like that, but so I did. And then when I got out and I looked in the mirror, my face was like streaking and I could see the sunscreen and like was running white even though I had already absorbed my skin so I had to kind of wipe it off and like what's the point so I will say this the one downside to this is that it's not waterproof I wish it was I'm sure there is one that is and I just didn't grab it but I really really am enjoying this and my face is not got sunburned so I think it's doing its job um, one flop which I should have gone to before I switched over from lips. Um, one flop is the Agave Lip Treatment from Bite Beauty. So I got the birthday gift and it was either the, the birthday gift for Sephora and it was either going to be um, the Glam Glow set or the Bite Beauty lip set. So it came with um, a little sample size of the lip treatment and a lip scrub then it came with like a tiny little like lip stick in a stick formula and it came with a uh, like a regular lipstick and a regular tube formula and they were both they're all just deluxe sample sizes except for the the sample of the of the lip treatment and the scrub that was just in like a little pa like packet <sighs> so I've already had the lip treatment before and I liked it for a really long time and I, re I actually wrote a review of it on, on Influencer, but I had to go back and change it because, because I got the sample and it just reminded me of why I had to throw it out. Now I know that they, Bite Beauty uses food grade ingredients in their products, so that this might be why it started happening, but also maybe not because I just got the sample and the sample also did the same thing to a lesser degree. It, just follow me. So I used to have the, the full size. I, I bought the full size for like 24, 25 bucks. I loved it for a really long time. <clears throat> and then suddenly I started, I would put it on overnight because I thought it was like a really good moisturizing overnight treatment. Suddenly I start breaking out with these ridiculous cold sores on my lip and so I had to stop using it. And I ended up throwing it out so I think that one maybe it was just, it had just turned, maybe, because I had it too long and it, it's got food grade ingredients in it, so maybe that just goes bad after a while. But so I get the sample and I'm like, I'll give it, an, I'll give it another shot. I put it on and literally the next day, I have all these tiny little bumps all over my bottom lip and I'm absolutely terrified that they're like cold sore blisters and if they erupt, they're gonna turn this disgusting cold sore. So I, I threw it out it's in my empties like I just I cannot do the lip treatment so it's either the food grade ingredients or it's just too thick and my lips can't breathe because this is twice now that I've used it and it's just done weird things to my lips so I ended up going back to my Burt's Bees my Jack Black uh, so yeah long tangent aside that is my one flop well not my one flop I've got some books that are flops but so that was my one like makeup flop next Oh, it's hot today like it is I feel like it's probably like a hundred degrees and it's humid and I'm inside in a room with a fan without the fan on and without the window open like what am I thinking all right well the windows open now I get a little bit of a breeze but the fan is broken and I did not realize that I feel really bad now because my friend house sat for me and I was like yeah there's a there's a ceiling fan in your room and it's broken so great friend. Alright, moving on. <clears throat> I have a new shave cream and I'm usually using the, the foaming ones so I 
my mom saw this, and I was with her shopping at Target, Walmart, Target, Target. It was Target. Um, it's this Cremo Astonishing Superior Moisturizing Concentrated Shave Cream. So, it's called Cremo. It's got this horrible glare, but there it is. <laughs> um, it's it's in the scent Coconut Mango, which is why I got it. The other one just didn't appeal to me. It smells pretty good. Um, I can definitely smell the coconut, not so much the mango. And it's that cream uh, formula that's slightly like shiny metallic. It says, impossibly slick formula dramatically reduces nicks and razor irritation, can give you the closest, more com most comfortable shave. Unique moisturizing formula leaves skin astonishingly soft and smooth. I really like this. I've only used it a couple of times, but it's definitely, it definitely makes your skin like wicked slick. So you only need a little bit, like a teeny tiny amount goes like a super long way. And you just rub it into your skin and it says, like even when you open it for the first time, like when you undo the thing to take the foil pack off, there's another, uh, I don't want to say warning, but there's a message on the inside that says, please read uh, directions. And it says, rub skin with the hottest water you can stand for 30 seconds. It's highly concentrated and water activated. You will massage enough into your wet skin until a light lather forms. Less is often best. Shave. Add water as needed to keep it slippery. I, okay, so I took this on vacation with me. I used it before vacation and I've used it after. And every single time, I haven't done the hottest water possible, um, but I have used hot water and it definitely works. You don't want to keep a constant stream of water on your legs, it'll just rinse it off eventually. But just a little bit of water, then just move your leg out of the stream of water, turn the shower off or whatever you do and to shave your legs. And um, if you need it to be like more slick, just add more water and it works like a dream. This, I have to say, though I like it, I think this gives me the worst razor burn ever. Like, I get, since I started using this, I've had some of the biggest razor bumps of my life and they're itchy and they're painful and they're red and they're just horrible but I really but that's only on the backs of my legs where I usually get razor burn so for the rest of my legs it really works really really nice oh god that looks so shiny it's hot but I really like this I think it's really cool it was under ten dollars highly recommend will be buying again and it says that it can where does it say? One tube can outlast several cans of gels or foams. And I really like this. And I, I probably like only use like maybe this much. Because I, I literally use like the tiniest amount. Of I genuinely like this. Will buy again. 1010 recommend. The next um, favorite of the last two months are my, oh, if I can get them. Miley Cyrus Converse. If you saw my last video, which was my birthday uh, haul kind of video, you'll know I got these from my boyfriend for my birthday. They are covered in, ha in cat hair because my cat is shedding like crazy. It's summer. He's going to do that. But it's got like a little Miley Cyrus symbol there, a little silver Miley Cyrus symbol there. It came with um, satin laces, which now um so i use the standard black and it has like a bandana print on the side i love these i've never had converse before i am over the moon for those shoes they look so cool never worn anything high topped i love those so much they are probably my favorite birthday gift to be honest sorry everyone my favorite birthday gift okay before i move on to books i'm going to move on to a computer game that I was playing with a friend of mine. This is the Nancy Drew, I'm holding that weird, why am I holding that weird? This is, this is the Nancy Drew game, Sea of Darkness. It's set in Iceland and we just, we've played this, these games since like elementary school. We, we love these games and I was like looking at it the other day and it says, um, 
like everyone ages 10 and up and I'm like how did we figure these games out when we were kids because they are so freaking difficult but we love these games I think they're so much fun this one um I don't know I love them all I love the scarier the better like the the one set in Japan uh, Shadow at the Water's Edge was probably the scariest one we've ever done because I mean, it's a creepy, like, kind of the ring kind of girl who's, like, the bad guy. And it's really just a... I don't want to give anything away. But there's, like, a jump scare with her. And it's, like, you were, you're not expecting it. Nancy just turns around and it's there and it's like, ah! So, that was the one time we ever actually screamed playing one of these games. Um, but I love these. I wanted to give, like, a little shout-out because we always play a Nancy Drew game around my birthday and around her birthday. So, that's nice. Um, okay. So we're going to go for the flop books first. <laughs> You're going to think I'm crazy. They're Christmas books. <clears throat> I think I, I tried to read this one, gave up, did not even try to read this one. I think I'm just going to give them away. I, I got them at the library book sale. This one says a cup of, oh, they both say a cup of Christmas cheer, but this one says tales of faith and family for the holidays. And this says tales of joy and wonder for the holidays. I love a Christmas story. But these are just like Reader's Digest Christmas. And I just, I don't want them in my collection. I'm not going to read them even at Christmas time. I think they're really cheesy. I'm not a big fan. So I'm just going to get rid of them now. And I'm going to say, if you want a Christmas book, go to the library. They've got a holiday section around the holidays. And find like an actual Christmas novel and not like one of these little dinky five page story novels because they're just not worth it. However, a Christmas book I did like because I'm crazy um, is a Treasury of Christmas Tales. And it's one of those children's books that's like soft sided. Um, and it's got like the little gold pages and the, oh, the colored prints. And, the big letters and I just really like this book. I can see myself displaying it around Christmas time, reading the stories. I think it's going to be really nice. I will say there's a story in here that's called The Little Match Girl. Like that is the saddest Christmas story I have ever read in my life. I texted my friend I was like, oh my god, I just read the saddest Christmas story. She goes, was it The Little Match Girl? And I was like, how did you know? It's a, this little, it's a story about a girl who's selling ma matches, and it's probably like, God, let's be honest, it's probably in like the 1800s. Um, she dies. She follows around all these people who are having like these great Christmases. She keeps looking in the, in the windows of these like rich kids and seeing all their presents, and she loses her shoes, and she freezes to death. That's not a good Christmas story, so that's the only one I didn't like out of this, but um, aside from freezing to death, on Christmas and going to heaven. Um, the rest of the stories are really fun. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna keep this one because it's, I mean, it's cute, so, and I like it. So I'm just gonna put it away until Christmas and I'll take it back out again. Yeah, you see? You see? So going in relative order through what I've read the past two months, um, I can't remember if I already included these. They weren't in my bookshelf. Usually when I read a book and I'm, I haven't talked about it yet on my channel, I leave them on my coffee table and these were still on my coffee table. So I'm pretty sure I didn't already mention them. Because I know I read the first one and I know I mentioned that one. I read the oh, next two in the series of the um, Barbarians. So volume one, volume two and three. Volume 2 is Brother of the Dragon, Volume 3 is Sister of the Sword. It takes place about 12 years after the first book, I think. Um, this one's mostly about the brother and the dragon, obviously, and with some delving into where the sister is, and this one's mostly about um, the sister and her coming to the brother's rescue, pretty much. I like these books. I'm going to keep them. I think they were totally worth it and I can see myself um, lending them to my friend Michelle to read them as well because I think she'd really like them. So these are staying with me. This one I think I'm going to give away or donate back to the library. It's um, oh and those were by 
Thompson and Cook. Yeah, Paul Thompson and Tiny Cook. Um, this one is by Nicola Cornick. It's the, it's the Confessions of a Duchess, and it's, um, it's, I guess it's from the series The Brides of Fortune. Not a big fan. It's one of those, like, smutty, uh, 17th century, uh, corsets and skirts ravishing of the of the women. Not a huge fan of this book. The plot, aside from the dabbles of raunchiness, um, the plot was fun. It's all about, um, there's one guy who is like her guy, um, is trying to find a murderer and she is trying to help the townspeople, uh, fight the owner of the land, I guess you'd call him. Um, he's, he said a tax to tax all the um, single women who are getting a salary to get half of their salary. Or they, they can wed and give up their inheritance to their husband, but they don't have to give this guy half of their money. Some people are choosing to do that. Um, some people want to fight him and they don't want to get married. And it's like, and it's, it says the brides of fortune because they live in what's called fortune's folly. And, um, like a bunch of guys are coming to fortune's folly to find a, a rich bride, essentially because of this new tax. They're like, Ooh, they're going to want to marry because they're not going to want to give away their money. But I'm just not a big fan. Um, I mean, you can even tell by the cover, like, you can't even really see her face, and her boobs are, like, the main focus, so I'm gonna give this one away because I'm not the biggest fan. Uh, okay. One book that I really, really loved is The Palace of Illusions by, I'm going to butcher this name. Chicha Benerji Divakaruni, I think. Um, it's set in India, but like not in India that we know today. Like it's it's a mythic tale, and it's got magic, and it's got warriors, and it's got war, and. Um, it's got kids born of fire, and it really takes, I think, um, in my opinion, in my limited knowledge, it takes a lot of, like, Indian beliefs, and they put it into the story, and there's a lot of, like, tales in here, and, um, it's really good. I really recommend it. I really enjoy reading this. Um, and, and it's, it's a lot about how you can't ch change your own destiny, because the main character gets pretty much a step-by-step -step, uh, guideline of how to escape her destiny and she can't help herself like she just she can't she just does what she's supposed to do acts the way she's supposed to act and her destiny plays out exactly how it's supposed to even though um, someone told her like you can change this if you just remember to not do this and do this instead it's a very very good story um, kind of sad at the end, but also kind of happy because it's sort of like a happy ending. Um, after the war, <laughs> it's a happy ending. Um, sort of, kind of, after, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Um, I really liked it. I think it was really good. Um, and the, the main character is a woman, which I guess is very, um, very different, like most heroes in Indian stories are male. Most heroes in all stories are male. But she's a woman and she's like powerful and uh, looked up to and she just she changes history. Like it's it's a cool story. I like it. 1010 recommend would read again. This one. I'm going to get rid of this. This is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. It's by Arthur Conan Doyle. I'm gonna get rid of this because while I do enjoy, well, the sun just came out. My goodness, I do enjoy a good Sherlock Holmes. 
Sherlock Holmes. I love the BBC show Sherlock, but reading this, I'm just like, I kind of already know the stories because of Sherlock. Um, not a big fan of this, and I noticed that reading this, um, the TV show actually like took bits and pieces from the stories and put them into context for the the world now, but they also like kind of changed the names, I think. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of this, I guess is what I'm saying. It's not my favorite um, set of stories, and I thought I was really going to like this. Um, and not to say I didn't like it, it just wasn't my favorite. But I'm not going to reread this, so I'm just going to donate it back or give it to Goodwill, or someone's going to love this a lot more than I did. And then saving the absolute best for last. Oh, I'm like pushing myself back in my chair. It's kind of freaking me out. Um, I read the Michael Christian Jurassic Park. I love this book. I was reading it and I just had the like strongest like compulsion to watch the movies like the originals one two and three so I did. And then I finished the book and I realized this book covers practically all three movies. Now it's, it's, yes and no. There's a lot in the book that was not in the movies. For example, everybody dies in the book. Except for, like, two people and the children. But, um, Jeff Goldblum's character dies in this. Um... The, the guy who Hammond dies in this but they live in the movie and I really don't know um, there's he wrote a second book but I have no idea what's going to be in that book because most of all three movies was covered in the first one so I'm just like it I don't know which which plot is it going to be because um, so as, as I'm sure you're familiar with the first movie but the second movie they go back and they're um, oh no sorry the third movie they go back and they're looking for some person's um, kid that goes parasailing onto the island by accident <clears throat> and they end up in a pterodactyl like birdcage and that happens in this. And they, they, they go on a raft on the river, and that happens in this. Um, the beginning of this book is the beginning of the second movie. So, I'm really just confused, like, how, what's going to be in the second book, but I'm sure when I get to it, I'll let y'all know. I'm not getting to it right now. You'd think it would be the next one I'm reading, but it's not because I picked up that book at a later date and I have not added those books into my uh, bookcase yet. So just this one. So probably sometime next year I will get to the next one and I'll let you know what's what it's about. If any of it's in the second or third movie. I have no idea. I do not know. But I love this book and I will keep it and reread it and reread it and reread it until it's literally falling apart and I have to get another book. So, yeah. Oh my god. So that is it for my monthly favorites the past two months. It was kind of all over the place towards the end there. I got a little hot and I just want to kind of go cool off somewhere because I am dying. It's so hot. Um, so that's everything I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was okay. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you in my next video. Bye!